Hey guys, Poro here, and today I've got a new type of video for you all. Usually, I focus on champions with specific roles, but this time I'm going to switch it up and talk about 5 great item builds to win all of your games with. These are all builds I frequently play, and therefore my large sample size should be more than enough to justify the legitimacy of each and every one of these. You can trust me, I literally hit Challenger in 2022. The title is right there. It's there. Look at it. That's all the proof you need. No need to check anything else. The first build I'm prepared to reveal to the world is the tried and true full lethality Malphite. Now, why would this build work? Well, it's simple. You know how AP Malphite is a thing because you can one-shot squishy targets sometimes? Imagine that, but instead of one-shotting just a couple of squishy targets, you can instead one-shot one squishy target to varying levels of success. Here's how it works. Your rune page is Hail of Blades, and your items are Prowler's Claw into honestly whatever the fuck you feel like building. Max W because the auto reset is nice, and then just walk up to them and hit them with those and then hit them with the rapid fire machine gun, and then pray that they die because if they don't, then you will, but don't worry about it because you will always survive and win the fight. I played, count them, one game of this a few months ago and got a positive scoreline, which means the build is clearly meta defining and should be adapted immediately. Another build that is meta-defining and must be adapted immediately is most definitely not my next entry, which is Lawn Mower Nico. Ever heard of Lawn Mower Vane? The premise is simple. You build Titanic Hydra, Rune Ants Hurricane, Rage Blade, and Riftmaker. The healing you get is insane due to the Omnivamp stacking from all of your on-hit, and you also become obscenely tanky for no good reason. The build gets the Lawn Mower name from the synergy between Titanic and Rune Ants, as you will literally mow down everyone grouped together in a matter of seconds. Now, imagine if you took that exact same build and put it on a different champion that definitely can't use it nearly as well. That's where Lawn Mower Nico comes in. Every positive trait of the build is erased since Nico only has magic on hit instead of percent max health true damage, but it doesn't matter because I suck at Vayne and I'm great with Nico, so the build occasionally works for me and therefore by association will work for everyone else as well. Now, Imagine if someone were to make a video specifically designed to clown on 5 builds that definitely makes zero sense, only to slip in one build that the creator genuinely thinks is a good build that people should try to take seriously if it sounds so stupid on paper that the best way to convey the build is to purposely put in a gag build so nobody suspects anything? I would never do anything like that. Anyway, my next build is Rylai's Mandate Mordekaiser. You can tell from how much I don't play this build that it's clearly a joke build. Anyway, the premise is simple. Riftmaker is a shit item, and Tank Mordekaiser is a big fat bait, so other options must be looked at. One item that Mordekaiser naturally loves building is Rylai's due to the slow the item provides, as well as the stats being fantastic for Mord. It's a super cheap item at only 2600 gold, so it's a strong early power spike. Imperial Mandate is an item that activates every time a slow is procced, so it pairs well with Rylai's slow since every ability can now proc the Mandate. Additionally, Rylai's plus Mandate is only 5100 gold, meaning the two item spike comes online much faster than any other champion's two item spike. Mord is also a champion who falls off really hard, so buying a fast power spiking combo to take over early game while Mord is still strong is a good idea. But as I've already said, don't take this build seriously, because I'm not the type of guy to let my biases run free through a joke video. Jin is a utility ADC. He provides slows, roots, and decent damage from long range, and can play a good weak side game. The problem is that every Jin player is delusional enough to think that their champion is a 1v9 late game hyperscaling champion, despite the fact that they will have 6 items and deal 150 damage on a 4th shot to a moderately tanky bruiser. Why bother to play a champion who can do no more than tickle the enemy past the 30 minute mark? I'm here to introduce late game Jin, a build guaranteed to make Jin a slightly useful pick. To achieve late game Jin, all you need to do is buy Locket of the Iron Solari. This way, you can at least provide your team with 10 armor and magic resist in a teamfight. You can also continue to stack other items that help your team such as Frozen Heart for the attack speed slow and Randuins for the attack damage reduction. If anyone gets mad at you for your build, simply point out that you wouldn't do any damage anyway no matter what items you went. However, if you're the type of person who absolutely MUST do damage at all costs, my last build is just the build for you. Full Crit Darius is a fantastic way to run over games and has absolutely no counterplay at all. Your build is Gale Force into Essence Reaver and then Infinity Edge, and you'll use these to one-shot every target you see. This strategy is foolproof, as they can't kill you if they're dead. Here's a couple of clips of me getting kills to prove how unbeatable this build is. They will regret opposing me. Oh, <laughs> 
As you can see, nothing can ever compare to the sheer dominance of Crit Darius, and I suggest this being an absolute pick or ban type of scenario. That's all I've got for you. Make sure you use these five builds to become a challenger just like me. Bye!